During this session we are going to cover scenes, how to view them, recall them and edit them. I've already logged in as administrator. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select scenes from the navigation page on the left hand side. So clicking on scenes takes us to a new page. This page here allows us to select a particular group and having done so we can select the scenes within that group. Here we have the ability to search in a particular group and this brings up a search tool by now you should be very familiar with for performing searches on groups. If we select the group 222, meeting room, you will actually see the scenes that are associated with this group and have been discovered by UC. You'll notice that there's also a drop down list above the group search dialog. This allows us to actually pick from any previously selected groups. So it's very fast to switch between different groups. Let's go back to the main corridor. There are two radio buttons below the scene selections. One is to view the scenes only and the other is to recall and view the scenes. We're going to leave it in the state of recalling and viewing scenes. So now when I click on the scene labelled full, that scene would be recalled on the live system and now we see a graphical representation of all the channels in that scene. Remember we can have alternate names for groups, for scenes and for channels. So if we were to rename Corridor North to be Private Office then that would appear below the slider for that particular channel. We are by default in an edit mode. So now anything I do on this page will affect the live scene. So for instance if I grab the first slider here, Corridor North, and I decrease its level, we will dim the channel Corridor North. I can dim that all the way down to zero and you'll see in fact the bar under the slider is changing and eventually turns black to indicate that the channel is off. At the same time I'm moving the slider bar up and down we can see that the level is being reported at the top of the slider. You'll notice also that when I select a slider the corresponding tick box is automatically highlighted at the bottom. I can use these tick boxes to control multiple sliders in one go. So for instance here if we take Corridor East and I also select Corridor West, now when I move Corridor East Corridor West will in fact move with it. This is what we call a broomstick control. So in fact as I continue to increase Corridor East you'll notice that Corridor West has already reached its maximum and if I take Corridor East to its maximum but then start to slide Corridor East back down again you'll notice that Corridor West is now moving with it so the two are locked together. If I don't like what I've done I can simply use the cancel button and the scenes will go back to where they were originally at the start of the editing session. You'll also notice that as well as showing the levels there is a, a drop down button and this allows me for any channel to either select it as an ignore which means it's not going to be altered when this scene is recalled, it's not part of the scene and therefore the slider disappears and also you see that the channel level is replaced with the word ignore or I can set it to be last level or I can put it back to level in which case it goes back to its original functionality. You'll notice that the first three channels in this scene have additional icons to the right hand side of the swatch below the level picker. 
The first channel I'm pointing at now is a full color device. If I click on the swatch above the slider, I will be offered a color picker. This allows me to change the hue and the saturation of the color on the device. This happens live, so uh, if we were actually looking at a, a live system, I would be changing the color now around to a red, and I will be altering the saturation of that red to almost maximum. If I now click the tick box to show OK, you can see in fact the swatch above the slider has changed to that deep red color. The slider indicator is also now showing a red and as before as I change the intensity and slide it down that will eventually go to black showing that the channel is off and is dimming up and down. Okay, um, if we look uh, at the next device to the right, the next channel in this particular scene, you'll see there's a similar icon, um, but it's actually greyed out at the moment, so if we click on that and open it up, uh, you can actually see that this particular device is a colour device, but it's actually set to ignore colour. Just like we can ignore level in a scene, we can also ignore colour. Um, I have the ability at the bottom to change its mode from uh, this ignore mode with the greyed out icon and I can in fact uh, set this device uh, to operate as a tunable white device. So here it's showing me um, colour temperature scale in Kelvin and I can simply take the slider here and again if the device were live I would see it now starting to show very very warm colours down to kind of a candlelight, all the way up to blue sky at around about 8,000 Kelvin. There's also a palette to the right of the slider, so I can very simply just jump directly to a particular color temperature, 5,000 here, here 2,700 Kelvin. Once I've made my change, I just simply tick and now you can see I've got this particular tunable white device showing around about 2700 Kelvin. Again I can change the intensity level of that device. Let's just go back to uh, that device, we'll select it again, uh, or look at the bottom here. I can ignore it, put it back to how it was before. If I now try and select colour it actually tells me that this particular device does not support uh, full colour. So you, you can't make a mistake. Uh, just to note that if I'm editing um, the colour temperature of this device uh, and I change it to 7000 odd Kelvin and I want to cancel that change I just click on the bin icon and in fact you'll come out of the edit but in fact you'll go back to the original 2700 Kelvin selection. So we've seen now how we can adjust levels, how we can um, control color, full color devices and tunable white devices, how we can set channels to ignore color, how we can set channels to ignore levels. Having made changes on the page, you may well want to save them. Uh, in order to do this, we just press the save icon and we get a confirmation dialog come up asking us if we really want to do that because it's going to overwrite the existing scene. We will say save. So now this scene will be saved in the router. So the next time we call this scene, we will get this selection and I'll just show you that. So if I go to another scene, which is the off scene, all sliders go down to zero. And if I now go back to the full scene where we were originally, you'll see that the slider levels have returned to the new scene selection. There's another feature which is very useful, um, and we touched on this when I introduced the subject. If I now change this um, radio button here to say view scene only, and in fact we're back in our full scene, we, what you'll notice is I see all the levels in the scene, but in fact no scene recall takes place. So this is very useful. I can look at the medium scene 
on a live system and I can see what the levels will be on that scene, what the colours will be on that scene, but I will not actually recall that scene live in the system. So that's basically how we can edit scenes, how we can view scenes and how we can recall scenes. I want to show you uh, something that's important about roles and privileges now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out of administrator and I'm going to log back in and I'm going to log in as a user who I know has been set up uh, to have a role as an operator. Let's see if I can remember the password. That's great, and I'm in. And what you'll notice is I come in as an operator to the scene recall page. It's the only page that an operator will ever be allowed to see. And you'll also notice that this operator is being offered a choice of either the main corridor group, the storeroom group, or the warehouse group. And those choices were set up when we actually set the account up as an administrator. So the user called Flintstone was allowed to see the main corridor, the storeroom, or the warehouse. At the moment we've got the main corridor selected and it shows that person the list of scenes available in the main corridor. Likewise, if I go into the storeroom, I will see the scenes available in the storeroom or into the warehouse, the scenes available there. If the user selects one of these scenes, then in the live system it will be recalled. You will notice that you don't see the level bars because an operator is not allowed to edit scenes. An operator can only recall scenes in the groups to which he has been assigned. Now this is a very useful feature because you can imagine it now allows uh, a large open plan office to be programmed so that uh, an individual user can have control over, for instance, a group um, close to him which would be associated with task-based lighting. Thank you very much for watching. That concludes this training session on UC.